of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. A very warm welcome to all of you who are joining us via the internet for this most important day, the day of our Cardinal Winning Lecture, our annual flagship event at the, the uh, St Andrew's Foundation here at the School of Education at the University of Glasgow. And it begins with Mass. We remember our mission to Catholic education and we wish to place that in the hands of the Lord. This is also the end of the year, the end of the liturgical year, and by tonight we'll already be in uh, a different year. So we want to take the opportunity to reflect back and also to look forward with great hope to the year ahead. As we begin our Mass, let's with humility acknowledge our sins and ask God's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Stir up the will of your faithful, we pray, Lord, that striving more eagerly to bring your divine work to fruitful completion, they may receive in greater measure the healing remedies your kindness bestows. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. The angel showed me, John, the river of life, rising from the throne of God and of the Lamb, and flowing crystal clear down the middle of the city street. On either side of the river were the trees of life, which bear 12 crops of fruit in a year, one in each month, and one of the leaves are which are the cure for the pagans. The ban will be lifted. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in its place in the city. His servants will worship him. They will see him face to face and his name will be written on their foreheads. It will never be night again. And they will not need lamplight or sunlight, because the Lord of God will be shining on them. They will reign forever and ever. The angel said to me, All that you have written is sure and will come true. The Lord God who gives the Spirit to the prophets has sent his angel to reveal to his servants what is soon to take place. Very soon now I shall be with you again. Here are those who treasure the prophetic message of the book. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm is, Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. Come ring out our joy to the Lord. Hail the rocks who save us. Let us come before him giving thanks. With songs, let us hail the Lord. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. A mighty God is the Lord, a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his. To him belongs the sea, for he made it, and the dry land shaped by his hands. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. Come in, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us, for he is our God, and we, the people who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. Alleluia. Hallelujah. Stay awake and stand ready, because you do not know the hour when the Son of Man is coming. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Watch yourselves or your hearts will be coarsened with debauchery and drunkenness and the cares of life, and that day will, spring, will be sprung upon you suddenly like a trap, for it will come down on every living man on the face of the earth. Stay awake, praying at all times for the strength to survive all that is going to happen and to stand with confidence before the Son of Man. 
the gospel of the Lord. Normally in parish life, I would see this morning as a kind of a mini hogmanay, if you like, not as in the sense of the gospel, not a time of debauchery and drunkenness and the cares of life, not that kind of hogmanay, but an opportunity to look back on the year which has passed and to look forward to the year which is ahead, because this is the end of the year. And if we take seriously that we live within liturgical time, then we are coming to the end of one liturgical year and beginning another. And so as we look back, we're able to evaluate the year, to leave it behind us in some ways, and to pray that it may have been of some spiritual benefit to us and others. And of course, what a year it has been, very, very different. And I don't have to labour the point of how difficult it's been and how much suffering it has brought to so many. And yet there have been signs of hope as well. I think in particular about our virtual Vatican walk, which the staff and students of the School of Education undertook, pledging and walking 4,000 kilometres eh, to get to Rome, and also in the process raising about three and a half thousand pounds for Glasgow Spirit of Christmas. It was a great opportunity to, to show that what is possible and that we can come together even when we seem to be apart. And as we look forward, we are able to listen to the message of our first reading, which is one full of hope. It's the book of the apocalypse, as we've been following over the past few weeks. And scripture scholars will tell us that apocalypse is a very particular form of scriptural genre. It's very dramatic. It's very powerful, as you can see and as you've heard over the past few weeks. But essentially, it's about saying that God is in charge of history and that God will intervene into history in order to bring about the salvation of his people. And that even though if we look around us, all we may see is a, a kind of destruction, then nonetheless God is looking into that history and is bringing out of it the good and bringing us towards hope. In fact, it's very poignant if we're told that in the hopeful future, the ban will be lifted. Won't that be wonderful when it comes? And we can look forward with great hope because we have our faith. That's what gives us a sense of purpose, a sense of the beauty of life, even in the darkest of times. And so today I would like to share with you an image which I often share with my students. It is of the ancient burial chamber at Newgrange in Ireland. You may be familiar with it. Newgrange is quite amazing because it's a, a very low burial chamber, um, very ancient and it has a passageway which goes down from the outside, down into the central chamber, which is where whoever it was who was buried there was buried. Down that passageway, there's a shaft of light which goes, but only once a year. And that's because it's when the time when the sun is the lowest point of the sky, and therefore it goes through this passageway at this very low um, building. And so it's on sunrise on the shortest day of the year. And it was clear that the people who built this mausoleum, if you like, had a very symbolic purpose in mind, that in the darkest time, the light can shine into it and to give hope. And the light from then will grow stronger and stronger and bring us lots of warmth and lots of joy. And that's my hope and prayer for today. As we come to the end of this Annus Horribilis in many years, in many ways, and as we come to some of the darkest days of the year, quite literally in terms of the light. And I pray that we will have hope that God is casting his light upon us. And that's why we always have here in the church lit our Paschal candle. Jesus is the light of the world. He is the one who brings light into our darkness. He is the one who gives us hope. He grows greater as we grow lesser as the year goes on from his birth at Christmas. May his light, the light of the risen Christ, shine into our lives and into our hearts, giving us hope for a brighter future.
we bring our prayers with great confidence before God, our heavenly and merciful Father. We pray for Pope Francis. We pray that he may continue to teach and lead us with great inspiration so that we may be inspired to understand that the future which is in God's hands will be a bright one. Lord, hear us. We pray for all believers that we may look upon the Paschal candle which was lit at the day of our baptism and recognize that we have been called to an eternal destiny. Lord, hear us. We pray for our country of Scotland, and particularly in this month in which we have been celebrating the feast of St. Margaret of Scotland and St. Andrew of Scotland. We pray that the light of Christ may shine upon our shores as it did so long ago through the work of St. Ninian and St. Columba, and may we keep the flame of faith alive in our hearts. Lord, hear us. We pray for the University of Glasgow, for the School of Education and for the St. Andrews Foundation. May we seek inspiration from Jesus Christ, light of the world, the way, the truth and the life. Lord, hear us. We pray for our Catholic schools and all who work in Catholic education around the world. And we pray that through carrying the light of knowledge, but also of faith, that they may illuminate the young people in their care. Lord, hear us. And finally, during this month of November, we remember all of those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, that the seed of eternal life placed in them at baptism may be coming to its fruition. Lord, hear us. Almighty Father, we thank you for the new year which lies ahead of us. We pray that we may be open in mind and heart to listen to your word and to put it into practice. We ask this through Christ our Lord. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the sacred offerings which at your bidding we dedicate to your name, and in order that through these gifts we may become worthy of your love, grant us unfailing obedience to your commands, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life, and being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us, and though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. 
even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation. And as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all, while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offering and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms are outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your Son until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, says the Lord. For those of you watching at home, I'd like to pray with you our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that those to whom you give the joy of participating in divine mysteries may never be parted from you through Christ our Lord. Thank you very much for joining us for Mass today. I hope you're looking forward to the rest of the celebrations, especially to Rebecca's talk. I'd like in a particular way just to thank three people who have been involved in this Mass very closely. First of all, Frank, who played the music, our parish organist here. Uh, Michael, who's been filming. And also Emily, who's a MEDUC 4 student with us at the university, who read. She wasn't able to be here in person, but she sent us a recording of her reading. So I'd like to thank her. She's a parish reader here at St. Colum Kills anyway. So I'm delight doubly delighted that she was able to be the one who read for us today. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. <laughs>